everybody. Welcome to Making It Simple. Hope you're having a beautiful Wednesday. Here we are in the middle of another week. Tomorrow starts April. My goodness, time is flying by. So many different things going on. I don't even know where to start, to be honest with you. I uh, just want you to know that I think of all of you and pray for all of you every day. Now, you may say, well, Pastor, you don't know me. And you're right. Maybe you're, maybe you're watching this for the first time. Uh, maybe 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 you've been watching and we've never actually met in person, but you appreciate what it is that, uh, you know, what it is that I offer. But regardless of our relationship, as far as whether we really know each other uh, that well or, or, or maybe not even at all, God has brought us together for a purpose. So I ask him every single day to watch over every single uh, friend that I have here on Facebook every single family member, every single viewer, every single listener, whatever the case, uh, you are included because we are in this thing together, friends. You know, as we've started this journey uh, several weeks ago, as I've shared very, very clearly, my intent is very simple. I use the word, I use the title, making it simple. It is to not oversimplify the Bible. It's not my intent. My intent is to introduce you to Jesus. We happen to be using Scripture in order to do that. Because it is in the Scripture that we're able to look at life lessons. We're able to look at situations that took place that we can still find value in today. And we can find the person and the character of Christ. Meaning that example that we've been given. That, that, um, that road that we're going to travel. As, uh, as fellow believers and worshipers and followers of Christ. Uh, where you are today in that journey really doesn't matter. Whether you've been uh, doing it for 50 years, or maybe you've not even started, I still want you to get to know Jesus better. Because the more you'll know him, the more you'll want to know him. And uh, so today, we're going to start chapter 2. There's some pivotal things in this. As we will start going through this journey, we just wrapped up chapter one yesterday, and wow, what an awesome several weeks that we've had. I think we're up to episode 27 or 28 or something right now. I really don't remember the number, but the, the fact of it is, um, is that we've been able to go through this journey in a step-by-step -step way, connecting with one another, and that's what we're supposed to do. That's exactly the intent of all of this. It is not a platform or a bully pulpit or anything else that I've tried to assume and assail to here. As much as it is, I just want you to know what I know. I want you to feel what I feel. I want you to enjoy uh, this time together and know that God loves you right where you are. But he loves you too much to leave you there. You may be saying today, well, you don't know what I've done. And you're right. You don't know what I've done. Some of those things aren't necessary to talk about. You know, we live in a world where everybody wants to expose everybody else's dirty laundry. We want to dig up this and dig up that, and we want to hurt this person and hurt this other person and whatever the case, all oftentimes to gain that 15 minutes of fame. I had my 15 minutes of fame a long time ago, living out a, a childhood dream, and that was it lasted about 15 minutes. But you know what? Uh, it's okay. The way of getting attention today while... Many use social media or use other platforms is oftentimes not done the right way because their heart is not filled with the right intention. We see today people in power that are not benefiting others. We see today others that are in power that will do anything to maintain that power. Jesus is number one, the most powerful of all, because Jesus within the Godhead God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It tells us in this very book of John that nothing was created that he didn't create. We are not dealing with just a mere Bible character. We are not dealing with a mere historical figure. We are dealing with the Creator. We are dealing with God. My point here at making it simple is to introduce you to him. Because I want you to have a relationship with him just like I do. And that relationship is one that grows every day. That relationship is one that has moments 
that has issues. And we go through them and we work through them and we learn through them. And I learn to rely on him more and more and more every day. So no matter what you're dealing with today, good or bad, whether it's on you, whether it's because of someone else, neither here nor there, I want you to know there is an answer and his name is Jesus. And as this journey continues through this book, through another book, and through on so and on so and through life lessons and through personal testimonies and everything else, I will do my ever-loving best because I care. In reality, I care to introduce you to this one called Jesus so that you understand he's the answer. He's the answer. And that's kind of my opening today. Just felt like that with my heart. I wanted to share that with you. And let's start at chapter two. Our journey here takes us through a few passages a day. Nothing uh, of any hurry. Uh, if you're tuning in for the very first time, I would encourage you to go back. I just put my name in, Andy McDaniel, and uh, you'll find them all. They're all there. Everything that I put out, it's all there. Um, and you'll see what we've done. You'll see how this works. You can also go over to YouTube. I have a channel there. Uh, same thing. Put in my name, Pastor Andy McDaniel. It'll pull it up. You'll be able to find all of these are archived there as well. Well, I say all of them, most of them. I'm uploading more content uh, every few days as it's available. But uh, but I want us to begin by, by understanding, again, we're not in a hurry here. This is about learning. So, and, and the way that I teach is I'm not in a hurry because this information is important. We don't want to just scan through it as quick as we can just to say that we did. I want it to have purpose and meaning. So today at verse 2, or chapter 2, it says, this is the account of the first miracle of Christ, the beginning of his ministry. It says, on the third day. Now, there's a reason that that is a specific amount of time issued. Because while the account of John, the Gospel of John, does not give us the account, accountings of the other Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, of the 40 days in the desert after Jesus was baptized by John and the Holy Spirit descended upon him, it says that once then, immediately, he was taken off into the wilderness and tempted 40 days and 40 nights by the enemy. So this third day was after that. It says there was a marriage at Cana of Galilee. Okay, There's a specific location and a specific time. And the mother of Jesus was there. We'll go back to that in just a minute. And both Jesus was called and his disciples. He was invited. He was asked to be there to the marriage. And when they wanted wine... This was part of the celebration. The mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine, because someone had let her know that. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with you? Now, I'll explain that in a minute, because certainly on, this, on the offset, on the, on the first reading of that, one might think, well, Jesus was being disrespectful to his mom. No, he wasn't. Hold on. He says, My hour is not yet come. And his mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he says unto you, do it. And we'll stop right there, okay? That's the first five verses. Now, again, the specific period of time on the third day that dealt with after his temptation. The marriage at Cana, this was an event. This was a, a planned event, obviously a celebration between two becoming one. This would be the location of the very first miracle of Christ, turning the water into wine. We'll talk more about that in, in, in detail tomorrow. But here we're told that Mary was already there. Okay, so was these friends, was this family, uh, a community that everybody came together? We don't know. We're not given the specifics on that. And it honestly, it doesn't matter. Neither here nor there. She was there. And there was a specific reason, because she was the contact point between Jesus at that point. Jesus also, it tells us, along with his disciples, was called. In other words, they were invited. They didn't just show up. This is a recognition of us inviting Christ into our life, accepting, if you will, his invitation. We're saying, yes, I will receive that invitation. I, will, I, will, I want you here. Um, because he won't be where he's not wanted. It tells us they had run out of wine. Okay, this was, again, part of the celebration. I'm not going to get into the whole 
uh, wine argument. Uh, a lot of people will go down that road. I'm not going to. Uh, some want to argue the the uh, the teetotaler, you know, concept, you know, of, of, of this could not have possibly been an alcoholic drink. And, you know, they want to get into all the intricate theological doctrinal details about whether you should drink or not. That's not my intent here. I'm not getting into that argument. The bottom line is the water system at that time was terrible. Water was not always clean. It was uh, filled with impurities and not able to be drank without having a whole lot of intestinal issues. The fermentation process allowed that to be cleared up, at least to the degree where it could be drunk. Was it grape juice? Was it wine? I wasn't there, and neither was anybody else. And so to have such silly arguments is just non-productive. It doesn't do anything. The bottom line is, it tells us here, they ran out of wine and they wanted some more. That was it. The celebration was moving forward. People were beginning to, you know, gather and, and maybe in greater numbers and they needed more stuff. And so when they noticed that they were running out of wine, they went to Mary and said, hey, we're out of wine. What can you do about it? And she in turn went to Jesus. Now, what is the lesson there? They went to her with the dilemma. She didn't have an answer, but she knew who did. This is a great message for all the believers today. I don't have all the answers. You don't have all the answers. No pastor that you're going to meet has all the answers, but we know the one who does, and that is the Lord Jesus himself. This is a great illustration of that. They went to Mary with the problem, and she said, I don't know how to fix that, but I know who does. Jesus responded, and he said, what concern is this with us? You know, why, why, why are you bothering me with this? Now, I know that sounds rude, but, that, but there's a point there. He was basically uh, asking Mary, does this really concern us? I mean, isn't this their business? They're out of wine. Why has that got anything to do with us? Was this our concern or theirs? However, he had an answer. He was asking a question, and he wasn't being sarcastic. He was trying to create the thought process, but he was also being obedient to the Father because his timing is specific. It is on point. It is never too early, and it is never too late. It is always exactly when it's supposed to be. So he followed up, and he basically said, my hour has not come yet. My time has not come yet. What time was it? the time for his first miracle, the introduction, if you will, of his ministry. He was always obedient to the time of the Father. Your will be done, not mine. It was never about him. It was always about what's best. And in particular, this had to do with timing. And so we should be obedient to that as well. We get in a hurry sometimes. We're ready for things to happen right now. When indeed right now it's not ready. We want it to be here as soon as we place the order. We want to go stand on the porch and expect for it to show up. You know, as soon as we put the, the dinner in the oven, we want it to be done in five minutes. We're holding the handle. We're ready to get ready. That's not reality at times. And dealing with the timing of God, um, we need to understand that too early causes issues. Too late causes issues. And that's in all things. It's got to be exactly on time. So, Another profound statement would be found here as this wraps up that we all need to hear. And I want to close on this. They asked Mary, who in turn asked Jesus, and he gave her the answer. And then she went and she said, whatever he says, do it. That is where our faith has to lead us, is that whatever God says, wherever he says go, whatever he says do, just do it. Now, I don't say that in a blind, just reach out there kind of way. But at the same time, if our faith is firm, that in all things, God is possible, that anything that can happen, it is possible through God, that we learn to have that level of faith and trust. I realize in the world today, we have so many things we question. We have so many things that we argue about, so many things that we have distrust in. Our relationship with God should not be one of them. Now, I realize life's going to have some difficult moments, some difficult journeys. 
there's some things we just don't understand. A young person dying, a, a child being harmed, all the different things that goes on in this world that we don't understand. God is perfect. God is good. We don't always go by what he says to do. And the wickedness that dwells within the human heart is beyond comprehension. As I've shared with you before, and those of you who've maybe never heard my story before, I used to be a police officer. I saw things that people were capable of that I didn't want to believe. We're living in a time right now that we see that more and more and more. And we don't want to believe it. We don't want to believe that it's real, but it is. What we need to understand, the lesson through this, is if we learn to trust God, and I mean fully trust God, enter into that relationship in the closest, most trustful way possible, whatever instruction he gives, just do it. And it will return tenfold, sixtyfold, a hundredfold, whatever it may be. That is not the prosperity promise of give me $10 and God's going to buy you a house. That's not what I'm talking about. It is how much do you trust him? How much do you trust him? Because that is the foundation he can build on in your life. Our trust in him is the foundation we can know will uphold and hold firm to everything that comes our way. No matter whether it's a storm or whether it's a gentle breeze, we'll be able to withstand all that comes our way through this journey called life when our faith is placed in the one that we fully trust in. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we continue this journey and look at how this miracle played out and how it worked. Thank you for your time. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.